Hey, I'm Courtney Waterman, your tutor. Lover of anime, manga, and math. And you just tuned into another session of Tutor Me Senpai. Welcome back, everyone. Today, we're jumping into a 10th grade topic synthetic division. Now, if you're new to my channel, I'll be putting time codes in for this video in the description box below. So use that to skip ahead to whatever part of the video you think is most interesting. As always, if you have any questions about what we see today or even on homework, you can always put it in the comment box below or visit my Facebook page at Tunami Senpai and tell me all about it there. At the end of this video, I'll be linking my 10th grade playlist in which I cover a lot more topics. So if you're interested in that, make sure you stay tuned. This video is going to have three parts, so leave a like, smash subscribe, and let's get started! Now you may be thinking, why should you need to know synthetic division if you already know polynomial long division? And one reason is, it's always good to know another way to get the same answer. And another reason is that first way that you knew may not be the best way for you. Another way could be faster, easier to understand, less likely to make mistakes. It just opens up a lot more possibilities. So having more than one way to get the same answer is often a plus for you. So today we're going to be focused on synthetic division, even if you are already very, very well versed in polynomial long division. And to start us all off, we're going to compare the layout of the two. Now synthetic division looks pretty similar, yet pretty different from polynomial long division. Now for this question up here, 2x cubed plus 6x plus 152 divided by x plus 4, we would write it in this fashion if we're doing polynomial long division. You see your divisors out here, you have your dividend here, and we know that the quotient, the answer, goes up top here. All the math goes below here. But if we were to write this same question in synthetic division form, it's going to look, like I said, a little similar, yet pretty different. Now before we get into the similarities and differences of this layout, let's first make one more observation for polynomial long division. Now notice, we have a 2x cubed, but we have no x squared term. Now I said in my last video on polynomial long division that if you are still learning this, it's good to put a placeholder here. However, you don't have to. If you're pretty familiar with polynomial long division, you don't need to put that step in. It's not crucial as long as you understand how your math is supposed to look you can still get by with just this, writing it out without having that placeholder here. So keep that in mind, that's gonna play a role when we're talking about synthetic division and comparing the two layouts. So right off the bat, you'll see one thing that jumps out at you, and that's a lack of variables. You see, polynomial long division has lots of variables in there, and the bigger your polynomial is in your dividend, the more variables you're going to potentially see. Likewise, the higher the degree of your divisor, the more variables you're going to potentially see. But none of the variables are here for synthetic division. We don't actually deal with variables when you're actually doing the math. The variables come at the very end when you're putting everything together in your polynomial form. That's one pretty big difference. Now, before we jump into some more differences, let's talk about a couple similarities. Now, the first similarity I'm going to point out is this little house thing I have here. So for polynomial long division, you have this regular house. And you see I drew something very similar. However, it's upside down and it's two rows deep, where this one is just the one row deep. So this is another similarity that you can put in. Sometimes people don't do this. They can also write it like this. Put a little box around here and then the same numbers. And you can... You can do something like this. This is another form you may see, but I like to put mine in this first form because it, it kind of pays homage to polynomial long division, having this upside down house here. But you have to remember it's two stories deep instead of the one story high for your house here. Another similarity is although there are no variables, these are the coefficients of your dividend. Just like you have your whole dividend here, you have pretty much just the coefficients, but they're inside this house. Just like this is inside this house. Inside, inside. Which means that outside would be your divisor here, right? However, although it looks a little bit different, this is going to be the place of your divisor. So now we're gonna jump into another difference here. I said these were your divisors. However, they look very different here. Why are they different? This is x plus four, this is a negative four. It doesn't have any variable and the sign is negative. Well, remember polynomial long division. One reason we do it is to see if this divisor is a factor of this dividend. Well. This divisor being a factor means that this would be a root. This 
x plus 4, when you solve for it, means that negative 4 is a root. x equals negative 4 is a root. That's where this negative 4 comes from, or a possible root. If this is true, if there's no remainder and x plus 4 is a factor, that means negative 4 is a root. So all we're doing for synthetic division is we're taking that potential root and using it as a divisor. So polynomial log division, use the factor. If you were to solve for it, you would have the potential root. So that's another difference here. One more difference is, remember, I said you didn't have to have that placeholder here. As long as you understood how the math works, you can get by without the placeholder. That's not necessarily true for your synthetic division. You need to put that placeholder here. If you're ever missing your powers of x or powers of whatever variable is in there, make sure you have a zero in place for each one. It's up in the air for this one, but make sure you do it for this one. So regarding the layout, these are pretty much the similarities and differences that I wanted to highlight today. Now, when it comes to the math part of this, there are some differences in there are some potential similarities, and you'll see a little bit more of those in our next section. We're gonna actually solve this and make sure we get the same answer we're expecting to get when we solve this one last week. So in today's video, we're gonna have two examples just like we did for our polynomial log division. In fact, we're gonna do the same exact examples just so I can show you that whether you do it this way or the other way, you're gonna get the same answer. However, it will look different as we're doing it. So if you haven't seen my first video on polynomial long division, you can check it out right up here. Use that as a refresher or simply to see if we get the same exact answer. Now we've already discussed the similarities and differences of the layout. Now it's time to see how does the math look for synthetic division. And I'm here to tell you that the math is actually pretty similar, if not simpler than polynomial long division. Now the similarities of the math is gonna end pretty much in the overall structure of what we're gonna do and the little nuances, the little details are gonna be where the differences lie. And you'll see what I mean by that. But first things first, we said this is going to be the potential root that we're trying to see. Is this a root of this polynomial? Now negative four, the first thing we're gonna do first is not do anything with this negative four. The first thing you do in fact is take this very first constant and pull it down. Now unlike polynomial long division where the quotient goes on top, your answer is gonna be below. So once you brought down this first constant, you're going to do something very similar to what you did in polynomial long division. You're gonna take this divisor part out here and multiply it by this number that you put here. And this is gonna be a negative four times two. You're gonna put the result right here. A negative eight is what we get. We don't do anything with the sign, but we're just gonna put it right here the exact same way, the exact same answer that we got when we multiply these two. And this is gonna be pretty similar, like I said, to polynomial long division. Remember, you take the divisor and you multiply by whatever you put on top of the house, right? You're gonna do the same thing, except what you put below the house. The overall structure is the same, but the next steps is where things get different. So unlike, unlike polynomial long division, we're not going to negate any signs. What you see is what you get. And that's why I say it could be somewhat simpler because you don't have to remember that arbitrary step of negating signs. Whatever you see here is exactly what you do. If there's a negative, you subtract. If there's a positive, you add. You don't do anything else. You don't have to remember any kind of flipping a sign for some unknown reason. So you take this zero minus eight and you're going to get a negative eight here. Then you do the same thing all over again. You're gonna take this number here, multiply by this, Put it here. So negative four times a negative eight gives us a positive 32, right? Same exact steps. Then you see these are both positive. You can put a positive here if you want, don't necessarily need to. These are both positive. You're gonna add them. Don't negate anything. Just add them. So this is gonna be a 38. And then you're gonna do the same thing. Negative four times this positive 38 gives you a negative 152. This goes away to just zero. Okay, now we're gonna get into something that's very, very different from polynomial long division. This last number is always going to be what your remainder is. This is the remainder box. Remainder box. Just put a box around this last one. Whatever your last one is, put a box here. Anything in there is your remainder. 
you see here we have no remainder. Just like in our previous video, we had two examples. The first one didn't have a remainder. Our next one will. This is pretty consistent. We have no remainder here. But what do I do with these numbers? What do these numbers mean? Well, you need to know where you started from. We have a 2x cubed. x cubed is the highest power. So we're going to take one power less than x cubed. So we're going to have an x squared here, right? That's going to be our highest power. And we're going to give this x squared our first constant. Then we're going to go down. We have an x here, right? That's the next power down. We're going to give it this constant. So it's a minus 8. And then we have no more x values. So we're going to have a plus 38. Notice we have no remainder. So you don't do anything else. This is your answer. Slightly different from what we do for polynomial long division, where the entire answer was the quotient. However, you can still craft your answer with this answer here. This is why I said synthetic division doesn't use your variable in the math, but you have to remember to put your variables back in to construct your polynomial afterwards. And one more thing that we should notice here is synthetic division has significantly less writing than polynomial long division. Hey, polynomial long division has long in its name. That lets you know it's going to be a longer method. Synthetic division has a lot less writing here than you would see in long division. So let's jump into our second example and see how we're going to handle this remainder box when it's not zero. So in our second example, we have x squared minus 7x minus 11, and we're dividing it by x minus 8. So we're going to set it up this way. Remember, we're finding the root or potential roots. This x minus 8, we're going to solve for that, and we're going to get a positive 8. When we solve for this, make it equal zero, and then solve for x, you're going to get x equals positive 8. So that's why you have that 8 here. Take the coefficients, you plop them here. Notice we're not missing anything, so there's no placeholders here. Now we simply start off by pulling that down. We have a 1 here, and let's get to mathing. 8 times 1 gives us a positive 8, just what you see here. Nothing else. Remember, we're not negating anything. What's negative 7 plus a positive 8? That gives you a positive 1. 8 times 1 gives you a positive 8. Once again, what do you see here? Negative 11 plus 8. So we're going to have a negative 3. There's nothing else here. This is our last one. This is our remainder box. Our remainder box is no longer 0. So we have a remainder here. However, what do we do with this 1 and 1 here? Well, remember, check back in. What's your highest degree here? x squared. So we're going to have one degree lower at an x. And we can put that first one here plus whatever this coefficient here is because there's no more x values, 1. So this is going to be a 1x or you could just have x plus 1. Now we have a remainder. And just like we did for polynomial long division, we're going to take this remainder and you see the sign. We're going to heat the sign here, take the constant and put it over whatever the divisor was, the whole divisor, x minus 8. So x plus 1 minus 3 over x minus 8 is our entire answer. A lot less writing, but you see, when you have a remainder, you take the sign, you put the sign here, take the constant, and put it over the entire divisor, just like we did for polynomial long division. And this is how you're gonna handle your synthetic division. So I hope you were able to follow along today's examples and I hope you now know how you can do your synthetic division. However, if you have any questions about what we saw today or even your own homework, you can always put it in the comment box below or visit my Facebook page, at Timmy Senpai, and tell me all about it there. If you hadn't done so already, remember to leave that like. It surely helps the channel by letting YouTube know that you found the video helpful. And if you found the video helpful, so can someone else. So leave a like, hit the notification bell, smash the subscribe button, and share this video with a friend. Well, that's all the time I have for today. I only hope this helped with your homework. I'm looking forward to seeing you again next week. I'm Courtney, this is your playlist, and this has been another session of Tutor Me Simplified.